Aikawa Razu, and welcome to Shift F1, a podcast about speedy race cars. That, by the way, is Japanese for together, unchanging, which uh, is a phrase meaning roughly the same as ever, just like Max Verstappen winning races, and just like this podcast because Danny O'Dwyer is back. How are Hello. you, Danny? I'm good. Look, it took Carla Sainz, what, was it 10 days or something from <laughs> from getting an organ removed to getting back in the saddle? And I was full of piss. and fit. I was I was so confident that when I got my uh, organ taken out that I would be like, I'm going to be Sainz-like jumping back in the seat. Mm. But, uh, you know, my body just needed a little bit more time. I'm not quite as athletic as that beautiful Spaniard. Um, but I'm here. I'm doing all right. I did just wake up from a nap, so I'm still recovering a little bit. But uh, it's been great listening to a shift F1 the past few weeks. I'm going to miss that this week. I don't tend to listen when I've already been on the show. Uh, also joining us, Rob Zachney. How are you, Rob? You know, delighted, not surprised, but uh, old school F1 strategy race. Yeah. What the hell? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was just feeling, I was trying to think what are my initial feelings about this race. And I was like, it felt comfortable, felt familiar, yep. you know? This to me is F1. <laughs> yes. Especially <laughs> in Suzuka. Something about it, Suzuka as well, makes it feel like, ooh, yes, 2003, you know, ooh, 95, <laughs> you know, it's like very familiar. Hasn't changed much this circuit, you know? Uh, if you're new to this podcast, a very warm welcome to you. And if you are new to Formula One itself, uh, we recommend listening to our preseason primer episode, which assumes no prior F1 knowledge and explains how the sport works and who everybody is. So if you'd like to go back and listen to that, it's episode 257. Also, this show would not be possible without our audience over at patreon.com slash shift F1, where every month we release an ad-free version of the podcast, along with bonus podcasts and videos exclusively for our patrons uh, that cover racing documentaries and films, F1 video games, experiments with other racing series, and a lot of weird things. So if you would like to support the show and get access to all that fun stuff, head over to patreon.com slash shift F1 or click the link in the show notes. What's going on this month danny yeah we already posted the uh second part of our drive to survive season review uh last month episodes one and f- one two five um one through until five one we didn't skip three and four one two three four and five <laughs> were covered and then on i swear i'm not still on pain meds um and then last week we, i'd already i guess packaged it ahead of time so last week uh, it got posted the second part to that episodes six through ten went up on thursday of last week so that has all been uh it's all been drive to survive it and i'll be honest over the years when we've done the drive to survive season reviews which we have done for every season of drive to survive some of them have felt a bit like homework like oh mm. i guess we we've got to do it but uh we were all excited to do this one and there was plenty to to talk about so if you want to listen to the whole package you can do so now over at patreon.com slash shift f1 also a massive thanks to all of our incredible incredible title sponsors <coughs> Excuse me. Must have a bit of hair in my mouth there because who's here but Mansell's Mustache, Get Rich or Die Ryan, Agave ATX, Cyphus Training, Turf SCS, at Team Blackjack, Michael Maves, Gordy's Army, at Talking Autos, TelemetryDeck.com, FTC, Drew Stewart, Bailey Foot, Abdullah Althani, Jason Chadwick, Abraham Getchell, The Space Above Us Podcast, Buddy Crimes is Tired of Being Audited, Sniggs, Alex Goucher, Max Voltar, Circuit Demon, Troy Stammer, William Romph, Irvine Clinical Research, big fan of California-based clinical research these days, mm. Lachlan the Madden Man, Samurai Love Story, appropriate, and Jason Kelly, thank you all so much. And thanks to all of our incredible patrons and listeners and everyone who sent very kind messages uh, over the past couple of weeks. And mostly, thank you to Drew and Rob, who were immediately uh, able to jump on and say, Danny, don't worry about it, we'll take care of the podcast Nobody wants you on the show anyway. We've got this. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I really appreciate it, guys. But I am glad to be back, very much so. Of course. Our pleasure. Um, well, let's jump right into the Japanese Grand Prix, shall we? Uh, a rain-soaked free practice, too. Yeah. But nevertheless, packed stands. That oh, is what you get. They're great. In Japan. They're great. Aren't Everyone. they great? The other, the other thing you get is a lot of like sincerely apologetic messages saying things like uh i took off work to be here or 
sorry, teacher, I uh, skipped school <laughs> to be here today. Like, they're so sweet. Like, there's no, you know, no, nothing crass, nothing particularly, you know, abrasive, just like very sincere, uh, nice messages from all these fantastic Japanese fans. Also, it felt like this, you know, maybe obviously the, the camera people hunt out cute families and such, <laughs> but it felt like there were more kids and families at this event than I've like ever seen at yeah. an F1 race. And I think my only thought is with them shifting the calendar, did they move it into ah. Japanese spring break? Nice. Uh, which I think might be in their school system, like the bigger break. Uh, right. So that like you could, more families could take the time to go do this. Cause it was striking how many like, families and little kids yeah. uh, were there, which was incredibly adorable. And striking how many of those amazing hats that they just keep producing, those hats with the front wings on them or uh, rear wings are just absolutely saw one that said little driver plushies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I saw one that, that might... said, respect to all 20 drivers oh, and like... arrayed around the hat were hel- uh, 20 helmets. Oh, my gosh. Look Tiny at that. helmets. Even yeah. Lance Stroll is getting representation in Japan. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just great fans, and it's just a fun circuit, too. It's just a, it, it, Every time you go there, you're like, man, it's a weird track. It's got like a little figure of eight going on, kind of. You kind of forget it's there because you don't really notice going under the track or over it. Um, and, uh, yeah, with the different time of the year as well, so it's, um, it was interesting to see how much the weather would play a factor, but I guess rain has always been a thing in Suzuka, you know, over the years, um, to tragic effect some years, and, and in more recent years, near tragic um, effect as well with that, uh, the crazy year we had with the, the spray and the the, um, the vehicle that was on track. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so uh, I was, yeah, it was also the 10th race since Jules Bianchi's crash as well. Um, not quite 10 years because of the change of the time of year that the track is on, but it was crazy to think that, you know. Um, I still remember that evening watching it uh, with a bunch of, um, uh, it must have been all F1 uh, mm-hmm. folks um, uh, online and, and how crazy and terrible and tragic that, that evening was. And it's nuts to think it was 10 years ago. Um, but also amazing to think how many times we have spoken on this very podcast about how that halo, man, glad that halo was there. Glad that halo was there, you know, over the years. So, yeah. um, you know, look, g- gone but never forgotten Jules Bianchi. Yeah, certainly not because Charles Leclerc uh, raced a, a tribute helmet uh, this weekend with uh, <laughs> Bianchi's number. He is his um, godfather and uh, mm. God, yeah. general, um, uh, what is the word for? Friend? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the person who uh, guides you through mentor? life. Mentor. Ment- that's mentor. what I'm looking for. There we go. Um, but yeah, let's or, get to no, the grid. There's a Japanese word for oh, this, sorry. for sure. Senpai. Thank you. There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, the grid, everyone. Max Verstappen is on top pole position, followed by Sergio Perez, his Red Bull Racing Honda, or Red Bull Power Trains teammate. Uh, third place, Lando Norris, or as I like to call him when he's in Japan, Lando Nori. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, yeah. Carlos Sainz in fourth. Can we do everyone? Can we do the whole (laughs) grid? Carlos Sainz in fourth. Fernando Alonso in fifth. Oscar Piastri sixth. Lewis Hamilton seventh. Charles Leclerc in eighth. Bit of a surprise there. He he did one run in Q3 between everyone else's runs. Um, Not sure why they did that, Mm. but it doesn't get him uh, any higher than seventh to start. Uh, George Russell lines up ninth. And then Yuki Tsunoda in tenth. 11th is Ricardo, who was knocked out by Tsunoda. Yes, um, he was. Of, that of was getting into Q3. You heard every time Daniel's dancing with, with a comeback. Every time it seems like he's about to do it. It's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. I felt that was, that, was a real, that was a real statement. I mean, he's uh, qualified him. Or Yuki's uh, qualified him in every race. But st- I think that in particular, knocking him right, he was like the last car as well through and into Q3. And that was, that was a bit rough. Yeah. Uh, 12th, Nico Hulkenberg, followed by Valtteri Bottas, Alex Albon, Esteban Ocon in 15th, through to Q2 for the second race running for the Alpine driver. Mm. Uh, Lance Stroll, 16th, <laughs> 11 positions behind his teammate. Uh, worth noting, though, that he was the only one running Aston Martin's new upgrades, which you know can either right. help or hurt you. Lance uh, Roll, maybe? Like a spring roll, summer roll? Mm. Lance Roll? Yeah? Yes. Okay. 
Good. We got one. We got one. Uh, Pierre Gasly in 17th. Kevin Magnussen in 18th. Logan Sargent in 19th. Crashed again in practice. Did. Yeah, big one. FP, uh, yeah, practice one on the first day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Re- a real tank slapper as well. It, it was a, you know... Williams are fucking praying to the old gods and the new that they yeah. can get through this part of the season without he, <laughs> destroying he, all their cars. Yeah, he was running the new upgrades, but yeah. because he crashed, they had to revert to the yeah. old ones. So, sorry. Uh, and then Joe Guan Yu lines up 20th. Danny, do you yeah. want to take us through the start? Sure, yeah. Um, the start of the race. God, I forgot I do this part. <laughs> um, <laughs> lights it out, away they go. Everyone briefly looks at Sergio Perez to see if he gets a better start than Max, which would be surprising. Um, he doesn't. Uh, they all sort of file through that first turn uh, pretty much in uh, order with a decent amount of space. Uh, the action that we get here is on the approach into turn two, where we have one of those classic uh, three into two does not go situations with... Uh, I guess the people who were affected worst were Ricardo and Albon. Uh, the third car kind of in the mixer there was um, our, our spring roll friend, Lance Stroll. Um, he was on the outside uh, of turn one as their sort of, which will be the inside of turn two, I guess. Ricardo's in the middle uh, of the track and to his right is a uh, uh, over t- attempting to overtake Ale- uh, um, Alexander Albon, who's had a nice little start up the inside of turn one. And... Yeah, it's 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 both a racing incident, nobody's at fault, and also a one of you guys should have known not to be there. Who is it? It's to me, it's probably Albin. Like, mm. like he probably, if he's if he's racing conservatively, he doesn't try and put himself up the outside there because like it's kind of inevitable. But you know, I, I don't think it's his fault. But you know, it's also it's also he had some agency in the situation, and he did end up in the wall. I kind of feel like that Williams car does not seem very good. It does not seem like the form that they were enjoying last year where Albin was like routinely pulling it up into the points. Mm. That doesn't seem to be the case this year. To me, it felt a little bit like because Ricardo had kind of a dodgy start, which I think was because Sunoda also had a dodgy start, so he got a little balked uh, in there. But like it felt like one of those things where Albin was – trying to be a first lap hero because that is probably where the Williams is going to get its business done. If anything's going to happen that day. Um, but I'm with you. Like if any, like Ricardo's in the middle there, he doesn't actually have like, literally he had no room to maneuver, right? He had to, he would have had to keep the thing on rails and not react to either car on either side. Uh, Albin is the one who did have the option to back out of that, but I can see why he didn't. He had such a good run coming out of one. Hmm. That like it certainly felt like he could do the overtake, uh, so I understand why he why he forced the issue. Uh, it's just you know you are really running the risk of exactly that kind of that kind of incident. I guess you could also argue did Ricardo kind of react to a phantom Aston Stroll wasn't actually coming up the inside that much. Yeah, there's the, there's the argument that he was looking in his left m- uh, mirrors, so that he was looking, he was more, which makes sense because he had made that turn looking at Stroll, so he doesn't yeah. necessarily know what's happening up the inside. But he's also taking the racing line, you know what I mean? Like he's 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 moving across the track in a way that you would to try and get up. It's a hill, you know, and and it's 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 a it's a sort of a you're screwed both ways situation as well because if Albon hits the brakes there, it's really hard to just break and not get gobbled up by everyone who's right behind you as well. So. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's an unfortunate place for it to happen as well. There's zero, it's all uphill into gravel, zero runoff. Yeah. There's the wall right there. So they, you know, it went in hard. Yeah, it went in hard. Both of them, they sort of collected each other in the crash as well, but thankfully both of them got out. But it meant those barriers were super messed up. So the red flags came out pretty much immediately. Yeah, it, it looks to me like Albon's front wing punctures Ricardo's rear right. Yeah. Which is why Ricardo spun. And then at, by then, Albon is on the grass, so he, he just continues into the barriers. Um, but yeah, red flag. <clears throat> uh, restart. Do you want to take us through the restart, Danny? Sure. Standing I sh- restart. Yeah, they they did the standing restart. It took a little while. Maybe it was 25 minutes, something like that, um, which when you're on the... I mean, I guess it's worse if you're on the East Coast, but when you're on the West Coast, you're staying up for this race. You're sort of used to red flags or safety cars in Suzuka, and it's stretching past midnight. Because uh, the race, I think it starts at, it was 10.05 over here, which is cool. Um, a, a novelty on a Saturday evening. But um, yeah, yeah, the the race started up again. Um, uh, 
this time everyone's two by two, like good little animals getting on the arc. Um, uh, Verstappen gets out ahead again. By the end of the halfway through the first lap, he's already managed to stretch out a pretty uh, big gap on Perez. Um, and I don't know if there was any other overtake sh- in, in. Well, Hulkenberg has back. a terrible restart. Okay. Um, just gets swamped. And uh, Ocon and Gasly, I think we saw this in the replay. Oh, they did. They yes. made contact off the line. And uh, that apparently caused a loss of downforce for both cars for the rest of the race. Oh, really? Wow, yeah. Um, it was, I forget, uh, who was. Gasly was flinching to avoid someone else, if memory serves. Like he had to, he had to react. No, I think it was that um, – was it because of the Hulkenberg bad start? He was, like, swinging around so Maybe, aggressively. Yeah. yeah, they were right beside uh, each other, yeah. Yeah, because like, you, you had a sitting duck car in front of you, basically. So you have that thing where the car kind of yeah. lurches sideways a bit more than – more than you want i guess you know the big thing that for me the the thing the big thing that was like sort of notable about the restart was the sheer number of people who went on the hards uh to mm. to stretch it out yeah because in, in the red um, flag you get to you get to do basically a free a free tire change yeah and uh i think it was it was pretty clear early on that mercedes were going to try hail, hail mary they were mm. going to try and you know, there are a lot of teams trying at the heart. I think Alpine did as well, right? Um, but Mercedes mm-hmm. was going to try to, like, basically because they had started, I think, on the mediums, they had met their tire requirement. Uh, and they were going to try and just, you know, make one stop over the course of the race and see if those see if those hards held up. Uh, which is ambitious, given that your restart is on lap two. Uh, but... <laughs> It to me, it felt like the kind of risk you have to run again, a bit like Albin. You know, raw pace is not in your favor. Desperate times. This, yeah, this kind of felt like Mercedes running an idea up the flagpole uh, <laughs> and, and see what happens. Um, well, indeed, uh, <laughs> because of the well, either because of the damage or because he's in an Alpine, Gasly does get passed by Sonoda. Um, around the outside in the oh. S's, which is oh. a real cool move, an unlikely place to pass. It's not the only uh, time he does it either. He's, this is no. just, he, he just loves the fans there. He's just like, watch this shit. I'm going to yeah. do it up, up a hill, up a hill, around the outside. Suzuka's a tight track. It's, it's, a, it's a bike track, basically. So Suzuka's not, like, there's not many parts of this track that are particularly wide. Um, no. So it's, uh, but people it's find cool. places to pass. It's, they do. It's kind of wild. Like there. Yeah, good spot. Yeah. Um, we get some interesting messages from Hamilton uh, suggesting, hey, do I need to let Russell by? Mm. Uh, and we learned after the race, apparently, that ha- Hamilton damaged one of his front wing end plates uh, when he and Leclerc touched at turn three on the restart uh, that resulted in a lot of understeer for Hamilton. Um, which his team tried to correct with an adjustment uh, when he pitted. But uh, indeed, Mercedes does have uh, the two swap um, on lap 14. Um, Hamilton is compromised from then on. Norris gets by him on lap 17 around the outside of uh, turn one in another gutsy move, mm. uh, and then gets Russell a lap later for third. Uh, gutsier still, though, Perez passing Hamilton on the same lap down the inside of 130R, yeah. and then yeah. doing the same thing to Russell one lap later. But I'll be honest, but definitely on the first one, I, I puckered up a bit. I was like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know, Jacko. Is that where you want to do it? Like, you're coming up to that little chicane at the top of the hill. That's usually a good spot, although maybe Russell proves my, his point later. Maybe it's not that easy a place to do it. Um, yeah, I guess 130R, it's always weird, right? It always depends on the cars. Like this year, they're able to take a flat out, no problem. So it's less of a, it's less of a, 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 a freaky turn. But um, yeah, just, it's not fun. It's not fun watching it. You know, when you know the weight of 130R, you're like, ooh. Um, but yeah, he made it look easy. And maybe it was because he's in a Red Bull. <laughs> uh, Sainz with the, was the next one to get both the Mercedes on lap um, 19 and 21. Uh, Russell running wide at turn 11. Um, between those, though, Verstappen gets by Leclerc, who is running long on the medium tires that he put on for the restart uh, and into the lead. So Leclerc is trying um, uh, kind of what we mentioned, Mercedes, but with a, with a different strategy. He's trying to go as long as possible on the medium uh, and then switch one time uh, to hard 
um, well, it would be the second time, including the red flag. Uh, he put Which, I mean, news. was a really, it's really singular strategy. Nobody else tries this um, at, at this race. Like, lots of people went to the medium. Uh, it was it was closer to the tire of choice for the race. But, yeah, he really made that thing work uh, in a way that none of the hard tire runners were happy with how the strategy played out. Most people bailed out. I think, I forget who, was it when signs went by or was it when Perez that Hamilton gets on the radio and says, change the strat. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not working. And, and for the most part, it seems like it did that. That strategy did kind of tank for everybody. Uh, now, whether the medium just in those conditions had more life in it, uh, hard to say, but Leclerc, made executing that strategy look pretty easy. He did. Uh, one lap later, though, his um, Verstappen's teammate Perez gets by Norris into third place. On the chicane, uh, right? On the chicane, yes. Yeah. Um, Perez looking strong in this race. Yeah, he had a, he had a solid drive. He, he had an errorless drive, let's say. Which, yeah. When you're in that car and you're not good enough to be as good as Max... That's pretty much perfect. That's what they want you there for. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just don't fuck up. Good job. Uh, there is actually one driver who did the same strategy as Leclerc, went from medium to medium during the red flag, and then one stop to hard, and that is Kevin Magnuson. Um, this ended up bunching up five cars in the midfield. Oh, my God. Who then all pitted it at just, the same time. This was, this was hilarious. It was like the game broke. Like, yeah. they all did the same AI or something. And yeah. was it Yuki who came out, uh, who jumped yes. all of them or something? <laughs> yeah, he so capitalized, uh, jumped two spots, I believe, into <laughs> 11th place behind uh, behind Hulkenberg on track. You know who was, you know who was not confident they were going <laughs> to skip everyone on that pit stop? was Valtteri Bottas. Oh, but in yeah. fairness to them, I was I watched, because I was just like sat up doing nothing for the past three weeks, um, I watched uh, all of practice and quality uh, live as well, and... The amount of uh, pit stop uh, practices that that fucking team did, I swear oh. to God. Maybe the heat here helped them, though. You know what I mean? It wasn't, like, sweltering like it has been, and apparently that's one of the issues they've had with the guns. Mm. Um, but they had some solid four-second, uh, you know, stops okay. this, this weekend, it's you know. Better than eight. Yeah. In a sport where, in a sport where like, two, two and a half is the standard. <laughs> uh, yep. They, but you're right. It is better than them seizing the wheel. Uh, basically, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's tough to say how it would have gone. Uh, we, we forgot to mention because uh, they're so rarely relevant. Uh, but oh. uh, Joe, Joe going yeah. out far, fairly early. <laughs> mm, yeah. um, but it feels to me like if not right. for uh, if not for Sauber throwing away a number of good drives for Valtteri. He's actually having a low-key, tremendous yeah. season in a car that does not seem very good, and um, and also like he has he has become a character. Like he is he is becoming late stage Alonso. Did you see that? I think I wasn't around. Did you see that Australia, the uh, the the commercial? He oh did my god, for, the Uber commercial for Uber. <laughs> that was like that was incredible, so good. unbelievable, genuinely hilarious. He looks the part. Like also, he looks ridiculous in that commercial. But like that's just who he is that's, now that's and what he looks like and also his team wears neon green too so it's not that far so you know his he is he is he is he is gambling twitch like that is his sponsor at the moment <laughs> is is off brand twitch so yeah i think uh he's loving it man he's loving life right now valtteri's loving life yeah I'll put when that. you know when he gets to get his he, he, the only problem is when he gets his tires changed like getting his fucking oil changed but you know aside from that he's he's doing all right I'll see if I can find that commercial and put it in the show notes. It's, it's worth watching. That's not um, let's see. Lap 33, Sonoda uh, catches up to Hulkenberg <clears throat> and with some great back and forth, Ooh. does get by him in the S's like he did on Gasly and into the points at his home race for the very first time. His happy place right there, that overtaking spot. Yeah. He rose uh, to the occasion. Look, while we talk about his mentality over the past few years, guy got into Q3. He's in the points now. He's done great overtakes. You know, I don't know. I don't know if Danny Ricardo's making him look better than he is, but Yuki's, Yuki, I, I don't think Yuki's getting a, form, a Red Bull seat anytime soon either. I should qualify this because Red Bull are crazy. Um, 
uh, and and expect so much. But uh, yeah, he's doing it, man. He's doing his thing. His performance is higher, and the mistakes aren't really there. That's the yes. big thing, right? Yes. Like he's gotten he's gotten like notably better. It looks like on Saturday and on Sunday, and then he's not shunting the car, uh, you know, semi semi regularly. So you, you sort of see the the two things and. You know, they still make a deal, a lot of his temperament. He's, he's spoken about that a bit this year, I think. Uh, just, like, trying to train himself out of, like, losing his shit on the radio a bit. And I think he has, kind of. Like, he's still he's still testy, but seems like a person you're happier to open a comms channel to <laughs> mid-race uh, than, in, than in previous years. So, yeah, like, uh, we are, we've we've entered, like, you know, peak Yuki here. It, and it couldn't happen at a better time because you, there's always that feeling that the Honda relationship with Red Bull is partly why he's got that seat, right? So you're thinking if that relationship is dissolving at the end of 25, right? That's when they have to have their own engine thing up. Yeah. Maybe maybe he's he's in a more vulnerable position there. I'm not sure, but um, yeah. Or maybe Honda tries to set up with someone else they're supplying. I mean, yeah. I've heard no, there's no Aston Yuki rumors at all. But it wouldn't surprise me if they if they try to find him, uh, find find him a ride. Be very funny if Aston's two drivers were, you know. And I, I think the reason this doesn't come up a lot is because Yuki's also he's doing the job right. Like he's not. He's, yeah. This is no Pastor Maldonado uh, situation, but um, paid driver or whatever. Um, but it would be very funny if Aston was Yuki and Lance. It was just <laughs> two drivers who were there ahead of some sort of uh, <laughs> nepotism or or a national uh, uh, affiliation. Um, yeah, my two good drivers. You know, Lance has gotten Yuki tendencies on yeah. the radio. If we're being honest, like <laughs> low key in a Canadian way, maybe sure. <laughs> but uh, what was the radio message this week? Where he just starts like he sounded like he got Jokerified. Where he's like, it's like we're in a different category, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He did say that, and also Hamilton streets. said on during qualifying, where are they getting that half second from? In fairness, like both of them. I think said it about yeah. the the pace. Yeah. This was yes, that actually that jumped out at me. I think it was in in quali as well. I don't think I've ever heard so many drivers get on the radio sounding completely mystified about yeah. what like where where the time gap is. They like z- genuinely zero idea for how the Red Bulls are doing it to them. Uh well, I don't know how he does it, but Sargent goes off track once again mm. on lap 42. Hopefully for Williams not doing anything. He's lieutenant now. They've uh, demoted him. (laughs) Uh, That that would be a promotion, Danny. That would be a promotion. That would be a promotion. Fuck! Damn it! You can tell I'm not from a military country. Private or corporal, I guess. Corporal, private, okay. Um, (laughs) Yeah, hopefully not doing too much damage to that uh, Williams. Um, Lap 46 signs with some new tires. Uh, certainly newer than Leclerc's, gets by Leclerc on the outside of turn one for the final podium spot with, uh, what is that, seven laps to go. Um, And because we are entering the final stage of the race, Russell decides to pull some bold moves (laughs) and dives down the inside of Piastri at the chicane, forcing him to drive off the track. Uh, it, It didn't work, but to me, it looked like, well, it looked like it had the makings of one of those moves that if it had worked... He would look like a genius. Uh, I feel like not. this is Russell's mo, though. Is is kind of that's what I'm saying. F- fluffing up these, <laughs> you know. He's. I don't think he's good at this. I, I, I'm not saying overtaking in general, but the gutsy overtake, I think, is not his. His racecraft is not good. Like, and that's the that's the thing that his time at Williams concealed the vulnerabilities right. he had as a driver in a competitive race because. What he did at Williams was like drive beyond the level of the car and take a not very fast car just on pure pace into positions that it didn't have play, had no business being. And then at Mercedes, man, what has been exposed is this guy just doesn't have that sixth sense for when is the moment to strike, uh, and he doesn't have like the you know risk calculator in his head that is like spitting out the exact like don't push it here, push it here. And so, yeah, that to me felt like another moment where, you know, we applaud the attempt. It's the sort of stuff we'd love to see from a from an F1 driver. George never turns these things into highlights, no. is the thing. No. Uh, yeah. And you look at, like, his teammate Hamilton, who obviously one of his great 
attributes is his ability to 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 break under pressure in those situations and that's what that overtake requires is is you to really break late get your nose out in front and then own that corner and this is more of a you know he's like he's like trying to get in front um yeah i'm glad piastri didn't crash into him um uh, and also i don't know i i guess maybe i'm not watching this one close enough if you're perez you can overtake there or if you're perez or verstappen you can you know verstappen doesn't have to overtake people <laughs> it's his problem but uh if you're whoever you can do it on 130 r part of me was like why aren't you just like setting them up for turn one like m- maybe the well, drs train thing was happening i don't know but you know on on the final lap he closed up enough for drs and does get piastri on the main straight for seventh place yeah bit of a shame required piastri, a piastri error full. though which sorry it required a piastri error piastri got wide and that's right had a bad, yes they had, they had a bad exit uh which compromised them like i i do think the fundamentally the issue is the mercedes the way they're setting it up um it is i don't get the sense it has enough aerodynamic efficiency that if it's gonna be a good driving car that it's a very fast car in a straight line <laughs> right. and i think that really shows up in the when they're trying to drs overtake and you just look at it, and it doesn't look like, you know, if you, if you couldn't see it, would you think the DRS was open? Maybe right. not. Hmm. Well, the race ends like this. Max Verstappen bringing it home in first. Uh, behind him, Sergio Perez for a Red Bull 1-2. Perez 12.535 seconds behind. Uh, in third place, Carlos Sainz Jr. Uh, rounding out the podium. Behind him, Charles Leclerc on that bold uh, one and a half step stop strategy. Mm. Um, Do we talk about when he went off in Degna too? I forget about that. That was when Perez passed. Yeah, yeah. That happened too. It was an exciting moment. Yeah. Uh, it was. He it was because they were the riding on board and was like, "Whoa, what's he doing? What's he doing? Yeah, what's oh, that, what's yeah, doing? yeah, that's right." Yeah. <laughs> uh, Landon Norris in fifth. Um, Fernando Alonso 6th, George Russell 7th, Oscar Piastri 8th, Lewis Hamilton 9th, Yuki Tsunoda in 10th place, gets a point at his home race. Behind him, we've got Nico Hogenberg, Lance Stroll, Kevin Magnussen, Valtteri Bottas, Esteban Ocon in 15th, Pierre Gasly, and Logan Sargent. Then the DNFs of Zhou Guan Yu, who again went out with a gearbox problem, Daniel Ricciardo, and Alex Albon, who crashed on the opening lap. And that was... Sorry, no, it wasn't. You got to answer for uh, that weaving Magnuson was doing on the straight. Oh yeah. Oh. Did he get a penalty? Oh yeah, you don't like you passed right over that, didn't you? You love. <laughs> you don't want to talk about K Mag pulling classic <laughs> K Mag maneuvers, <laughs> just like doing S's like he's heating the tires Show up down, down the, the road. road. <laughs> <laughs> did he get a penalty for it? No, he didn't. Okay, he did not. I well, then, think well, they, then no, they no harm, no foul. Generous interpretation of uh, allowing a defensive move and then reestablishing the racing line. But <laughs> the shot you saw on TV sure looks like he was doing S's. <laughs> uh, all right, that is it for the Japanese Grand Prix. We are going to take a quick break, and then we will be back with the news. Rob, speaking of aerodynamics... Uh, what's going on with future regulations? Well, uh, Autosport had an interesting story this week. I'm not sure it may have been an exclusive, uh, given how often they they mentioned sources have told Autosport. Mm. Uh, But apparently a number of teams did simulation runs of proposed, uh, like, proposed designs for the the 2026 regulations, uh, and in particular, the shift toward active aerodynamics. Active aerodynamics, uh, the simplest example would be like a bit like the way DRS works, where you have the wing at one plane and then it snaps open and reduces the drag. Uh, that's sort of an active aerodynamic system. Usually you see it a lot in uh, like performance EVs, which are trying to be very, very efficient. If you've ever seen a car that like once it achieves a certain speed, like a spoiler pops out of mm. the uh, like out of the the trunk lid effectively that's an example of active aerodynamics you don't want that drag there if you do not need it for cornering or grip so if the car is just going in a straight line it recedes and like goes flush with the uh the rest of the car and like, becomes very like efficient and your flaps in or something yeah. after takeoff <laughs> uh exactly so this is one of the ways that uh f1 is going to be changing the rules up it's going to make the cars 
uh, a little more efficient, a little bit faster on the sort of uh, you know redone redone regs on how the how the power is going to put down. The idea was they would have active arrow, uh, especially at the rear wing, and the tests, the early tests of how F one proposed this working were catastrophically bad uh, for for the proposed system. Uh, the The Autosport article is well worth reading because it sounds really fascinating. It sounds like a disaster, but like kind of the disaster you want to see from sim data at this stage. But basically, like numerous drivers reported the car being undrivable uh, when the arrow had receded into like low drag mode, <laughs> uh, like not even drivable in a straight line. Yeah, uh, driving within the limit, the cars were posting <laughs> speeds that were not Formula Two uh, oh. grade. Um, now the plan is one of the things the the one of the like findings early findings that seems seems to have been drawn from this is that uh, it hasn't killed Active Arrow, but it's sort of forced a rethink of how it might work. The plan was for it to be basically centered on the rear wing because that's usually where you see active aero, aero systems is where it's easier to sort of integrate with existing uh, sort of design architecture but the theory of why the cars behaved so poorly was that they became really unbalanced once that once the rear arrow kind of disappeared and that was contributing to their squirreliness was that you just had really different performance characteristics coming the, from the nose and tail of the car so the solution is you balance whatever's happening at the rear by having active aero at the front, which is cool. But I know what active aero looks like when you talk about a, a, a rear wing. That's very easy to imagine. Active aero for a front wing is a little bit harder to really grok like we see examples of like adjustable front wing that you know drivers being able to adjust it uh like on the move i think indycar you could you could do that for for years uh you could sort of dial in your front wing while you were while you were racing um but i don't know like i don't i'm having hard, i have a hard time thinking about like what does a front end active aero system look like um flexi wing that you know that's a mm -hmm. that's one way to do it that's not really active though so I'm, I'm very curious like what the imagined solution is for that because like think about the front of an f1 car what what parts do you see easily moving yeah and drag uh, to, is different right? balance it because like because the front of an f1 car like you know if you drive a i drive a jeep right you want to talk about some drag right i drive a i drive a cube down yeah. down the road right every car requires any race car requires something in the front you know to basically reduce drag as quickly as possible the, the rear wing is not necessarily i'm no aerodynamicist but like the rear wing is there for like a different reason than than for that it's it's attempting to either push the car down or whatever it is while also trying to reduce drag whereas like front wing aero design is presumably much more about spreading the air so that whatever it's doing afterwards yep. is the issue you know what i mean so primarily it's yeah it steers the air and yeah. yes there's a lot of like front end grip that comes from the from from the front but yeah, primarily it is there to sort of contour the air toward wherever it's going to go and how it's going to flow over the rest of the car. So, yeah, I'm trying to imagine, like, what active aero in the front looks like. You know, are we going to see the little, like, uh, front wings, like, opening and closing, like, you know, blinds almost as, <laughs> as those as those, as those those veins sort of snap open and close? I don't know. Uh, I imagine it looked pretty goofy. But I'm 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 kind of intrigued by it. But but also, right now it sounds like F wants to put this marker down. We're gonna mm. we're gonna lean hard on Active Arrow, and the the early results are it sucks for F1. Counterpoint: What if they all looked like F14 Tomcats? Oh, nice. Yeah, I was thinking Jace and the Wheel Warriors, where they just completely transform into a different type of car. But that also works. I would love a swing wing. Yeah, uh, F1 car like side pods, just that sort of like switch blade out, and god damn, that'd be great. Vital, yeah, you know, we're just one step, of one more. That's that's the that's the, the step away from wipeout. That's it. We just figured it out. Everyone's just racing Harriers. 
Uh, yeah, I'm I'm very curious to see. I I don't know. You're right, Rob. I don't know what it looks like, but I want to see it. Hmm. Um, Danny, what's our next story here? Bit of scuttlebutt around Sebastian Vettel. You know, we just can't help ourselves. It's 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 one of those years. We're gonna have drivers bouncing all over the place. And when you're talking about 13, the driver market, I think thirteen drivers seats are gonna be up for grabs. It's excellent. Love to see it. And who yeah. knows? Maybe someone will get kicked out. Lots of shuffling around the teams. Um, maybe somebody comes in. Maybe a rookie. Maybe not a rookie. Maybe an old guy. Although he's two years younger than me, which really annoys me. Sebastian Vettel, all 36 years of him. Um, you know, bees are fun, but bees can get boring. And uh, in a recent and interview... so can your family, I guess. so can your family. Your, your kids are growing up. They've got their own stuff going on now. They don't really care. Dad, I don't care about the bees. Stop talking about the bees. Uh, God, not the bees. <laughs> Killing me won't bring back your goddamn honey. You know, normal things you say to your children. Um, in a in a recent uh, uh, interview with um, a radio station, which I thought was in cyberpunk, but apparently it's actually a real radio station called Radio X in the UK. Um, of course, he was asked about um, possibly coming back to the sport. And there were some interesting quotes. Let me read some. I'm following the sport. I see what's going on. And it, aka a return, might be appealing and interesting. But it really depends on the full package because it is a big commitment as well with all the other stuff going on outside the driving activity. The bees, I'm guessing he's referring to there. Uh, to seriously consider, it will be very much depend on the package. From an age point of view, I feel uh, bloody young, which is a great term I've never heard, with all the guys that are still hanging around and signing big contracts being around for longer. It looks like I could have another 10 years in the sport, so I'm definitely ahead of them in terms of keeping fit. I've had conversations wow. with him. This was a question asked about if he's talked to Toto Wolf. I've had uh, conversations with him. Not really about the seat. Um, uh, we did speak about the whole situation in short as well. So maybe they were talking about, uh, you know, Bundesliga or, you know... Um, hell divers. Hell divers. <laughs> bees. So many things. Uh, so I'm staying in touch. I don't know. It has to be uh, a couple more phone calls and conversations, I guess, to really find out a little bit more. But for sure, Mercedes is one of the best seats on the grid. So... Who knows? He's throwing his hand in the ring. He's he's putting the feeler out there. He's you know he's he's thinking about it. I I I'd like to see Seb come back. It is a very Schumacher esque sure. move to do, you know, and talk about his sensei or whatever. Um, uh, hopefully, he would have a better run of it than Shumi did on his return uh, uh, to the sport. But yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't begrudge Sebastian coming back. Would either of you? Or is there any other driver? Is there any other driver you pine for? Are you secretly? Hoping that Nico Rosberg turns up again. <laughs> Roman Grosjean, get him back. Uh, <laughs> I would love to see Vettel back in the car. I'd love to see him go back to Red Bull and then win four more championships. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. What if he I, actually? Mm. Yeah, I, I love I love that because by the end we all we all love Sebastian Vettel. He became one of like the the, the nicest guys on the grid. He did, yeah. Uh, certainly one of the few with sort of a, a more global perspective, uh, sort of awareness of the world beyond uh, motorsports. But it also felt like his time was passed. And mm -hmm. this interview kind of feels like... Uh, I haven't heard a lot of other people saying this, right? The only person I've seen talk about Vettel's comeback prospects is Lewis Hamilton, talking about like you know he thinks it'd be awesome but i would also say that about a friend you know, and I, th <laughs> I think by the end they they were quite good friends and so you're gonna you're gonna talk up your buddy but i don't feel like in all the theory crafting of how these seats might play out i do not feel like sebastian's stock is particularly high uh you know given given the vacancies it also seems like he's not really racing much you know, outside of F1, he's not doing much. Yeah. I did a bit of research prior to this, and um, it didn't seem like he's, you know, which I guess is the whole point. So, But Alonso is everywhere. Yeah, 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 exactly. But Alonso, nobody wants to hire Alonso because he's he's a crazy man. We love him. Even but. though, even though this race was like one of his five greatest races. Uh, Alonso's? After the, yeah, this is... 
Is that what he said himself? Oh, dude, it's vintage Alonzo. He did this all the time with McLaren too, where he would be like, "I just drove the greatest race of my life." <laughs> nobody, nobody will, nobody will know because the car's not good. But like that was that was. I'll tell. I'll put this above. You know, all the races I won with with Renault and Ferrari. Wow. He is constantly saying like. I just painted a masterpiece. Amazing. And everyone's like, P6, bro. And he's like, look upon it and despair. Be your own biggest fan. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, speaking of uh, big fans, who who's big fans of Ben Suliam, Rob? <laughs> when uh, prompted. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of member clubs of the FIA uh, who sort of – we had the whole like allegations that he intervened inappropriately uh, in a couple like FIA rulings. This is the and president of the FIA, the FIA hmm. uh, Ben Muhammad Ben Suliam, and then the FIA investigated and cleared the FIA. Uh, <laughs> and then, in the wake of this, um, a, a number of member clubs have recommended uh, that the FIA take, take like legal action uh, effectively. Uh, against people who were who were slandering the organization. Wow. Uh, and and Ben Ben Suliam. Now the problem I have, well, there's a number of problems. One is this just continues the the saga we are in of the FIA being in the news for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Uh, like this is not like just let it pass. This feels a little bit like. It feels like of a piece with um, Susie Wolf exploring like legal remedies over you know the the allegation the investigation that was raised and they were quickly dismissed uh, against her. This kind of feels like a tit for tat. Like, well, then you know maybe we should mm-hmm. launch uh, la- launch an investigation or a, or a lawsuit against the people who've who've unfairly maligned uh, Ben Ben Suliam. But the other problem is. This also feels 100% like a thing he would organize. This mm. doesn't seem like a bunch of people rallying around this beloved figure because we know he does this shit. We like we know he tried to get Max Verstappen to, to go and like give a big vote of oh, confidence gosh. to Christian Wolf. So it, like this is his playbook. Is like, you know what? You don't change this is a big a big public statement of support. Yeah, really I'll call some, out your enemies. I'll make some phone calls. He's like, everyone's talking about everyone right now. And his wife is like, nobody's talking about you. Please just go to bed. Please go to bed. And he's like, no, we need to address this. We need to. The whole world needs to know that I'm on the level. Just please go to bed. It's, it's, it's late. And the list of member clubs that were like behind this. I mean, the FAA is, by its nature, it's kind of a big organization. But you might expect one suspects that there are some member clubs that are real like powerhouses right like yeah in the in the fia the uk uh, yeah but, the, but yeah. the list here is largely like uh like latin america and uh like the bahamas uh okay so ones that uh, maybe might need a bit more money next year you know when the fi- when the finances are done yeah, it's it's tough. To I've say. seen that like, FIFA I, documentary. I know how this shit works. <laughs> I don't know enough about like the motivations for like what like you know what does the Uruguayan chapter of mm. the FIA like what does what was the reciprocity that it would get from like supporting a, a given chairman? But it just seems it seems odd, right? Because you look at this list and the, you know the people who the, the parties that do not appear are some of the major like auto auto producing uh and auto enthusiast uh countries in the world uh so that that that's the other part of it is like it's kind of an odd uh array of array of chapters lining up in support it, it's it, sort it, of like puts into focus to people who aren't letting yeah. their support them. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i also uh <laughs> rob if you if you would if you have the article open maybe read uh the second to last paragraph uh for maybe s- someone else's angle on okay. uh, why they might support the list also interestingly includes the signature of Fabiana Ecclestone the vice president of South America for Sports who is also wife of former F1 Supremo Bernie Ecclestone 
She has emerged as a potential future presidential candidate oh, and no. potentially as early as the next election in 2025, depending on whether or not Ben Suliam opts to seek a mandate for a second term in charge. And then that means that his, like, what, a three-year-old son now maybe at this stage? not to, Maybe then he'll be, like, the sort of last emperor situation. He'll be, like, the, the new FIA sort of baby ruler, you know? I feel like if Fabiana Ecclestone becomes, like, head of the FAA, it's time to roll it up. She can't it even feels, stop her husband walking like through done. the Sao Paulo airport without a fucking gun in his pocket. She can't run Formula One. Come on. <laughs> or, or embroiling, like, dozens of people and businesses <laughs> in lawsuits because of uh, what he said on an interview. Hey, he doesn't remember doing the interview. It's fine. Yeah. He had an adrenochrome uh, this, The second he gets day. in trouble, I have no recollection of that. I'm all <laughs> Right. Well, uh, all right. Um, well, at the end of the Japanese Grand Prix, <clears throat> the driver standings look like this. Max Verstappen is on top with 77 points. Sergio Perez with 64. Charles Leclerc in third with 59. Carlos Sainz in fourth with 55. In fifth place, we've got Norris with 37. Piastri with 32. Russell with 24. Tied with Fernando Alonso. Hamilton has 10. And in 10th place, we've got Stroll with 9 points. Behind him, we've got Sonoda with 7. Oliver Behrman still has got six points. Nico Hulkenberg has three, and Kevin Magnussen has one. In 15th through 21st, we've got, with zero points, Albon, Joe, Ricardo, Ocon, Gasly, Botas, and Sargent. In the constructor standings, Red Bull Racing is on top with 141 points. Ferrari has 120. Uh, McLaren is in third with 69 points. Nice. Mercedes <laughs> is in fourth with 34 one point ahead of Aston Martin in fifth with 33. Ouch. Uh, RB is in sixth with seven. Gene Haas and team is in seventh with four points. And then Williams, Ooh. Sauber, and Alpine all have zero. Come on, Haas. If you would like to join the standings yourself, you can join our official <sighs> Shift F1 Fantasy League. It has been renamed from a big old string of numbers uh, into <laughs> Shift F1 Podcast. Okay. Uh, with no plus, they wouldn't allow me to put a plus in there. Look, man, as somebody with an apostrophe in their fucking name, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I feel. I feel your pain. We have branding Every to time consider. I book Nanny. a hotel or get on a plane. Yeah. Uh, we have for the uh, Japanese Grand Prix a ten-way tie. Oh, are you my ready? Garden. It's like the pits. It's like the pits when they all went in at the same time. <laughs> yes. I'm looking at the commentary box. <laughs> I see team 17107983084587. Wow, uh, what a great name. Yeah. That's actually a Hitler reference if you uh yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you were here Danny I'm but kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The, the, the fantasy Formula 1 fantasy like <laughs> renamed a bunch of stuff to a bunch of random numbers including our uh our league name. Uh also tied for first we have I don't know man. <laughs> Valtteri's bad nut. Let's okay. skip Ooh. to 2025. Oh, I no. need to sour Already. up. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, that's good. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Uh, kicking Haas and taking names. <laughs> Very good. These are great. Uh, These are top good. scorers, Bonato and Steiner Winery. <laughs> nice. That's very good. Ooh, Steiner Winery works. I like that. Uh, R.I.P. DeVries Visa Cash App. Random word salad F1. And I this is this is now off the podium, but I just have to shout this one out. Princess Mono Michael No. Oh, wow, that is that is your fucking Ghibli. Wow. It's, it's and two thousand and one crossover did you see the toto wolf quote about michael massey by the way holy oh shit. my god oh my oh, god he's please pull it up gonna rent- die mad okay, yeah he is living rent free in his head let me look this up i couldn't believe what i, oh, saw. I, I, no, like, I can, i'll just tell people what it's like I, oh, you know it now lives in my in my head uh him talking about like michael like what, what book was it for it was for like i think it's michael massey's book i think he might have done a memoir was that I don't true? know because no, it was Wolf gave the comment to someone else, but uh, basically okay, okay. saying that it, you know infuriated him what happened in Abu Dhabi, uh, and that Michael Massey is a pure egomaniac. 
Uh, right? That is that the is that the quote? Oh, the, the one that I saw. Yeah, pathological ecomaniac. I think you called him. Pathological ecomaniac. But my my favorite part one was I fuck I can't find him. I'm trying to find it right now. But it was something along the lines of like he's on the other side of the world and nobody thinks about him. He said <laughs> like, something oh, like <laughs> the the real like you know. Uh, for that for you that was the day i you know destroyed your family but for me it was a tuesday you know it was a, one of those sort of things yeah yeah wow we got multiple quotes out of that one huh i think like to me it there's a point where you just kind of move on from things but also it does feel like i've always suspected the thing that has really haunted wolf about it is that he thinks his mismanagement of the relationship with Massey cost Hamilton that championship. Right. The last radio message where Toto, we went racing, we went motor racing. Like the degree of like contempt and anger coming from Massey toward Wolf kind of suggested that something about Wolf had really gotten under Massey's skin that Wolf did not did not understand how like Mikey like didn't understand that, that relationship was not on like a Mikey Toto footing. And that it kind of blew up in the spectacular fashion at that moment. And I suspect Wolf's always kind of wondered, had he not sort of presumed that much familiarity and always been in Massey's ear, like sort of like begging for rulings, had it would it have gone differently? Would would Massey have wanted to stick it to him <laughs> by going through Hamilton? I've always suspected like that is actually the thing that bugs that bugs Wolf, especially because that, that's the type of leader he is, right? Like he's a he's a man manager. You know what I mean? He's like he's C he's CEO F one guy. He's right. Uh, it's the shit he's supposed to be good at. Yeah. He's managing rela like high level relationships, and Abu Dhabi like say a lot of things happened in that race, but you could say the decisive factor was a high level relationship that Total Wolf was the caretaker of got fucked up. Uh, I found a quote. He's Please. a totally unimportant person. He lives on the other side of the world, and no one is interested in him. He really was a completely pathological egomaniac. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Say what? Say what you they mean. Can't build a, they can't build a good car anymore because, like Toto's, like <laughs> enemy building technique, it's all wrong. <laughs> every time he sits down to build an enemy, yeah. he just looks up and it's Michael Massey again. <laughs> Michael Massey's face is on the yeah. Every time he goes to Australia, he's like <laughs> closer to him. Don't like it. Well, the overall standings in our fantasy uh, league. Uh, the top three look like this. In third place, we have the Bonato and Steiner Winery. That's sounding. Uh, second place, Valtteri's Bad Nut. Bad Nut. <laughs> and in first place, I don't know, man. Uh, but I did want to shout out, currently in fifth, we have... Oh. <laughs> Careful. Obi Guan Yu Jobi. Oh, that's, nice. That's, that's, that's delicious. Yeah. Love it. Uh, and, in, and in 14th place, signs point to wins. Signs? I'm not getting that one. Carlos signs. All signs point to point, Oh, signs wins. point to wins. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Uh, all right. Well, um, you can join our fantasy league. You can also sh send us an email at shift F1 podcast at gmail.com or go to f1.cool slash emails. You can also hit us up on the socials. I now have a link tree Ooh, going. Ooh, a link tree. That's how you know where we've made the big time. Excellent. You can get our Instagram, OnlyFans. Uh, yeah. What else we got on there? All what kinds of stuff. All kinds of good stuff. Um, and that's us around the internet. Now it's time to take it around the world. Let's race around the way. Yeah. I'm glad your doctor didn't tell you. You have to stop saying race around Can't the world. Can't do that. No. Do you know what the weirdest thing is? The the second, the prob, the main reason, except I was on pain meds and stuff, but the main reason I couldn't do, I couldn't talk much was because when they fucking intubate you, because like I'd never had a surgery before, but when they put the pipe down your fucking throat for air, then they take it out. It like fucks your throat up. So I had like I, I had like a sore throat for like well, ten I'm days. Well, actually, a weird thing. Yeah, it, I've been intubated. It didn't do that for me. Oh, it didn't us. Which makes me wonder, like, did your system, you know, fight it? Like, did your right. like did, did your like your system was like, no, baby, give me more. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> hey, check this out. <laughs> this party trick. 
Yeah, exactly. No, but like <laughs> it, like because I had it done and my throat was a little scratchy. It was like a a, a day, right? right. It was like uh, yeah, I feel a little raw, but like not. It, it didn't. I forgot about it until you mentioned that you were like right, still yeah. having effects days later. So either like you were sort of automatically trying to like gag on it and not not get intubated. Or they did a shitty job. Yeah, <laughs> you got the intern. It's just like get in, damn you! <laughs> Give me that Stop hammer. waking up. Uh, well, we're starting off uh, this weekend on Friday with the Craftsman Trucks at the Texas Motor Speedway for the SpeedyCash.com 250. Speedy Cash. Is that a payday loan <laughs> thing? That, that sounds a like a good establishment. Outfit. Yeah, fuck those guys. Hate that uh, MotoGP is at the Circuit of the Americas. Uh, Formula E is at uh, Misano World Circuit Marco Simoncelli in Italy for the Misano E Prix. Mm. The NASCAR Xfinity Series is also at the Texas Motor Speedway on Saturday for Andy's Frozen Custard. Oh, I love it. Every time. Every time it happens, I'm like, I got to get me some of that frozen custard. Uh, Motocross Grand Prix is at Cosodromo. Ciclamino in Italy Ooh. for the Motocross Grand Prix of Tretino. Tretino. Totino's pizza roll. Totino's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Totino. My hungry fellas. <laughs> uh, Super GT is at the Okoyama International Circuit oh. in Mimisaka, <gasps> Okoyama Prefecture. Oh. Uh, the NHRA is at the Strip at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Wow. In Izu Prefecture. <laughs> <laughs> For the four wide nationals. And we got NASCAR. Also, we no custard time. Is it time for custard? <laughs> we're, first, we're going to eat custard at the Texas Motor Speedway. Then we're going to go to the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. Love it. Fantastic. Not Mark quite Echo, as soothing. We, we've we've run out of all the all the Echo Park. We've done all the album name. We've done the Mark Echo one. We've done that. It's, it's I can't. There's no more. I don't have any more Echo Park. Echo, Echo. There we go. That was the, that was the last Echo Park gig. We're done. We're done. And uh, and that's a show. Uh, final thoughts, I guess. Uh, the conclusion. <laughs> final thoughts, I guess. It's well. It's nice to have you back, Penny. It's great to be back. We're 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 st- we're hanging out in uh, in Asia for one more on that side of the world, which right. is kind of closer to this side of the world in a way. At least us here on the west coast. We're in China next. China. We're in China next with the Shanghai International Circuit. First time in a while. Uh-oh. Did we did we do it last year? This is the first no. Year? No, this is the first time. First time, time since twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that big long straight. Ooh, I wonder if the Red Bulls will overtake on that. Big old straight, longest straight Almost on the calendar. It. We'll have to see. And then we're we're back to Miami for the 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 Florida car park drive. Um, yeah, I'm just mostly happy to be back in the podcast. Thanks for um, thanks for oh. having me. Bye, Rob, Rob just is connected, so I guess he's out. So <laughs> yeah. no point in asking Rob what he thinks. <laughs> I'm not going to edit him back in. So you might as well just wrap up the podcast. I can be, I can pretend to be Rob if you want. Oh, sure. What do you got? <laughs> He always does a pause. See, he always does a little pause for answer. Yeah, yeah. So I got, yeah. So I got it. That's that's what that was. Um, oh no, he's, he actually has come back. Okay. What what are your final thoughts, Rob? Final thoughts. Uh, you know, I think last episode we talked about how Suzuka would be a really informative episode because it's such a pure race track. It would really give you an insight of like what's really going on. Like take everything else out, mm. the flukes that have happened, like Red Bulls, like, ooh, we're more vulnerable than we've been in the past. And <laughs> everyone finding ways to plant stories with like different outlets about like Mercedes, I think, is the worst defender this year. Like constantly talking about like cars really coming along. Like it's so much better this year. We're really making progress. We've learned a lot from this It was a revealing race <laughs> red bull just drove away we did not mm. think about them again they're they are in a different category they drive away you know all things being equal and then you can kind of forget about them maybe sergio shows up because he shuffled back into the pack at some point but like no uh it's it's not competitive and to a degree like ferrari look really also like 
kind of marooned in the second place. Yeah. Right? Like, there's no yeah. one, doesn't seem like anyone's troubling them for the, the battle for second. And are McLaren kind of marooned from Mercedes too? Like, that's the worry, right? Is that we're not, there's no, not much fighting going on here. Yeah, when you said like two by two, uh, like good little animals through, <laughs> at the restart, kind of feels like that's how finishing order would be as well if you didn't have like you know the variables of, of various crashes. Um, you know, I think a really revealing thing is Albin can blow the doors off uh, Sergeant. You know, on Saturday. But their race pace during a race tends to converge. It's a bit like a Magnuson Hulkenberg thing. Like they yeah. don't like over over the long haul, that car just kind of ends up to- shuffled toward the back. Uh, Ocon appears to be decisively having a better season than Gasly. It doesn't matter. They are finishing yeah. near each other constantly because the car sucks. Um, so it's it's kind of a that that is kind of the the frustrating thing about this this race is it did feel like, Oh, this is an incredibly deterministic season. Like people built the car they built and that's it. Yeah. Although, uh, we've seen it before where one team can make a drastic leap in, uh, in performance in, in McLaren's case yeah. actually recently. So, um, it is only race. What is this? Four. So, yeah. um, of 24. We'll so. Of 24. I was actually just, so I, uh, I should have done this years ago. I have a, a spreadsheet now. With... You have a spreadsheet, Drew? You have oh, a spreadsheet? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Channeling uh, some real Williams um, energy. <laughs> with every episode that we're going to post this year, uh, oh, and then okay. uh, what, you know, all the titles will be, so I can just copy and paste. But by writing all these out, I have now, um, first of all, there's there's two two-week gaps. There's the summer break, and then there's another yeah. one at the beginning of uh, October. And then another gap in the beginning of November, which is interesting. But also the uh, Russia, yeah. the the hardest episodes for us are um, uh, the back to back ones where we have to talk about a race that happened and then do the pre race. Um, there are one, two, three times where that happens twice in a row. Oh, great! We're never going to answer emails ever again. <laughs> no. that's, what I, that's what I've learned. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Madness. get ready for that. There's a, there's there's a lot of Formula One coming up, and uh, a lot of things can happen. Hey, it could happen. It could. Hey, hey, keep listening. It could happen. Although to Rob's point, if we're saying that the longer the cars are out there, the more they sort of shuffle into the entropy, sort of shuffles them into their deterministic uh, uh, positions, then the more races you have, the more that's going to happen too. <laughs> so, so. But hey, look, you're the re- you're he- you're the hardcore fan. You're here. You're still listening. You're not one of those fucking you know fly by night you know uh, only on sunny days fans. You're here through uh, thick and thin. That's how you're a real F1 fan. When you suffered through the, the Schumacher years or the Vettel years or the Hamilton years or the, the Verstappen years, that's that's where you earn your fucking pinstripe. So we're glad you're here. And if you leave, you're dead to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, if you'd like to support the show and get access to all of our bonus episodes, the ad-free version of the podcast, and the official Shift F1 Discord, you can do so over at patreon.com slash shift F1. Have a good race weekend, everyone. We will see you all next week. Meow.